Can the new $1600 M4 Pro Mac Mini outperform the previous best of the best M2 Ultra Mac Studio, which is $4,000, two and a half times more money? Well, I think you're gonna be shocked because in this video, we went through all of our benchmarking tests, including real world performance tests, and the results were absolutely shocking. So let's get started. Here I have my benchmarking spreadsheet, and the first thing we're doing is the the SSD speed here you can see that the read speed is actually the same about 5,000 even though this is a 512 gig compared to one terabyte but in terms of the write speed this is about 50% faster because it does have more NAND chips with that one terabyte now getting into performance with Geekbench 6 in terms of single core performance holy smokes the M4 Pro is 50% faster almost 4,000 points compared to 2640 that's because this is old m2 tech and how does that translate into the real world well we tested speedometer 3.0 which kind of gives you a sense of the snappiness for web browsing and web-based apps and here the m4 pro was a lot faster so this is going to be a lot more snappy even though it's so much less expensive but the craziest thing was when we tested web design using figma this is a project provided to us by 500 designs, one of the best design studios based out of California. And can you believe it? The M4 Pro was a lot faster. This is crazy, this new chip technology from Apple. Imagine if you had no idea that the M4 Pro is that fast and you thought you should buy this thing instead. Well, that's why we make these videos, so subscribe because we have more coming. Now let's actually jump back to graphics performance in Geekbench 6, this is the metal test. Here, we're actually getting basically twice as much graphics performance with this thing because this has a 60 core GPU compared to literally only 20 GPU cores. So it has three times more GPU cores, but it's only about twice as fast, which is a good thing for the M4 Pro. But wait until you see how ray tracing goes into the mix because this has dedicated ray tracing cores. The studio does not. But first, I want to do some actual gaming benchmarks. This is 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme, and it kind of gives you a sense of the mobile gaming benchmarks. And here you can see see almost twice as much FPS. But if you look at the peak power usage for the graphics, it's literally almost twice as high with the Mac Studio. So this M4 Pro is actually very, very efficient. But if we go into a more realistic kind of modern AAA gaming test, which is 3D Mark's Steel Nomad Lite, here it was nowhere near a two times difference. This Mac Studio is now only 60% faster, even though it has three times more GPU cores, so the technology in this is doing really well for gaming. And then it gets even crazier in 3D Mark's Solar Bay, which is a ray tracing test. And here, there's not that big of a difference between the two, which is actually mind blowing to me, seeing as we have the ray tracing cores, which factors in, that is really impressive. So if you're playing a game with ray tracing, there won't be that big of a difference like we saw before. But first, our sponsor, Miniso Peru, made a genius USB-C dock for the 24 inch iMac, including the new M4 model, which sits perfectly on top of this and gives you a bunch of ports, including a TF and SD card slot, a 10 gigabit per second USB-C port, and three USB-A's, including a 10 gigabit per second version. But best of all, it has a secret slot on the bottom, which supports up to a two terabyte M.2 SSD, so you can save money on Apple's overpriced storage upgrades. It comes in silver, blue, yellow, green, and pink, and you'll find the link in the description to order yours today. And that brings us to Cinebench, which does now have a GPU test, which also factors in ray tracing. And believe it or not, the M4 Pro Mac Mini beats out the Mac Studio. Can you believe it? In actual GPU rendering, somehow, it's beating it out. That's blowing my mind. But now with that said, the most curious thing that I have between these two is actually Cinebench 2024's 10 minute stress test for multi-core CPU because we know from the teardowns, this thing has an absolutely insane cooling system, has a copper heat sink with this massive, massive heat sink, cooling fins, everything, it's nuts. 
while this thing has a very, very small cooling system, seeing as it's flipping tiny, I mean, look at the difference in size, it's tiny compared to the Mac Studio, so of course you can't fit in as good of a cooling system, and this thing did actually throttle a bit, but take a look at this. 1549 for the Mac Mini M4 Pro compared to 1932. It's actually not that far behind despite the cooling system. But wait, I actually did a test where I maxed out the fans on the M4 Pro using TG Pro software, which lets you kind of customize your fan curves, set it to max, and guess what? This thing scored 1667, 7.65% faster than with the standard setup, which Apple actually tends to throttle the chip itself, which yes, it did throttle down to 3.3 gigahertz, just so it doesn't have to kick up the fans too loud because this thing does get pretty hot. It reached 105 degrees Celsius on the chip compared to only 85 degrees Celsius on the Mac Studio. This is at 100% workload, which means the cooling system is so overkill the fans were idling the entire time. The cores were super cool. Apple basically made this cooling system for the M4 Ultra, which is coming next year. But in terms of peak CPU wattage, this thing took 50.51 watts, which is quite a lot considering this thing took 72.44. That's with 24 CPU cores compared to only 14 on this Mac Mini. And interestingly, the peak all-core performance clock speed was 3.85 on the M4 Pro Mac Mini compared to 3.26 because yes, these are older M2 performance cores. But going back to that Cinebench score, the M2 Ultra is definitely a little bit faster. And of course, how does that translate into real-world performance tasks and apps? Well, for you music programmers out there, we tested Logic Pro to see how many tracks you can play without overloading the system. And surprisingly, the M4 Pro Mac Mini was just barely off by 28 tracks. So 292 compared to 320 on the Mac Studio, it's really, really close, especially if you consider the price difference. And then we also tested Xcode Benchmark, and here there was about a 20 second difference. The Mac Studio was only 87 seconds compared to 107 on the M4 Pro, but it's not that big of a deal. And then for photo editors, we also tested Lightroom Classic. We exported 50, 42 megapixel photos, and here the Mac Studio was about three seconds faster. So only 19 seconds compared to 22 seconds, which you gotta say, like, that's barely any time. Like, who cares about waiting three more seconds? Well, we decided to add an even heavier test where we exported 500 of these photos. And yes, here, the Mac Studio clearly took the lead by about two minutes. So three minutes, 15 for the Mac Studio compared to 524. And the reason there's that big of a difference is actually because of the memory bandwidth. It's only 273 gigabytes per second on the M4 Pro compared to 800. That's a lot because it has eight different memory chips and it has more channels, everything. So because of the memory bandwidth, it's a lot faster. And then that brings us to Final Cut Pro video editing. This is a five minute HVC 4K export. This is the most common format that people film and edit in, including us. All of our videos are 4K HVC. And here, the Mac Studio dominated this test because it has literally, I think, four different encoders while this thing only has one, so it is so much faster, only 42 seconds compared to 201. That's why we actually use the M2 Ultra Max Studio for our video editing, just because the exporting is super, super quick. And now for our final test, 3D rendering in Blender. This is the Party Tug project. And surprisingly, despite the massive difference in raw graphics performance, thanks to ray tracing, this thing was only six seconds slower, 47 seconds compared to 41. So with all of those tests out of the way, let me get to my conclusion. But first, I gotta talk about the port situation because the Mac Studio obviously has more ports. First of all, it has an SD card slot on the front and the two USB-C ports are actually Thunderbolt ports 
on this thing. They're Thunderbolt 4 ports. On the back, you have four more of those Thunderbolt 4 ports, including a 10 gigabit Ethernet built in, two USB A's, HDMI, your headphone jack, and the power button. While on the M4 Pro, these front two are actually Thunderbolt 5, which is really nice. You have the headphone jack on the front, you have three more Thunderbolt 5s, HDMI, and you have Ethernet, which you can pay about 100 bucks to upgrade. So the port situation is definitely better on the Mac Studio, except you do have Thunderbolt 5 on this one. So now let me get into my conclusion. Well, holy smokes, guys, $1,600 compared to $4,000. Literally, everybody just buy this. Nobody should be buying this anymore. The only reason would be for exporting videos faster, but it doesn't really make that big of a difference. I would just buy this thing and wait a little bit longer because this thing kills it in so many different tasks, especially with 3D rendering, with ray tracing, all those other tasks that were almost the same, and you're saving so much money with the M4 Pro Mac Mini. And if you really, really wanna get this Mac Studio because of some of those results that I showed you, wait until the M4 Ultra comes out in the spring because it is gonna be a lot faster and it's gonna support ray tracing. It's just gonna dominate. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, go ahead and subscribe above and check out one of those two videos right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.